everyone. Thank you so much. Happy build to everyone. And I'm going to tell you how you can upgrade your .NET applications, any kind of .NET applications, to the latest .NET in just a few clicks. And how many of you have tried doing that already? All right, awesome. How many of you have .NET framework applications that they would like to upgrade? Oh, that talk is for you. Great. So let's go to Visual Studio. We have two flavors of the tooling available. One is CLI tool and the other one is Visual Studio. I'm going to show you Visual Studio first. And at the end, I'll give you a quick preview of the new version that is not released yet, but coming very soon. So Visual Studio, here I have my demo app. And there is a helper library, helper test, website. They all are targeting .NET Framework 4.8. Let me find the properties and show you that. Yep. All right, .NET Framework 4.8. Now, I have a tool installed that is called .NET Upgrade Assistant. And to get that, you go to extensions, you search for, oh, let me actually do that for you. .NET Upgrade. And .NET Upgrade Assistant. This is Visual Studio extension that you need to install to your Visual Studio. It's done by us at Microsoft, so don't worry. It's not some malicious software. Once you have it, you can right-click on your project, and there you will see a menu option, Upgrade. So I'm going to click on that Upgrade option. And here is .NET Upgrade Assistant. So the .NET Upgrade Assistant allows you to upgrade to the latest .NET. There are a few ways of how you can upgrade your project. You can do in place. Let me zoom in so you can all see. In place. That means that the project you want to upgrade, it will be just taken and upgraded to the .NET that you choose all at once. Then there is another option side by side. That, in this case, if you uh, select side by side, then your project will be remained as is, untouched. A new project will be created, and your project will be upgraded into that new project. So side by side, you'll have a new project, targeting new framework, and original one. And there is also an option, side by side incremental project upgrade. That option we created specifically for web applications, uh, because when you're upgrading from web applications to ASP.NET to ASP.NET Core, that's a very <laughs> complicated process. And here, as we heard from our developers, they prefer to do it incrementally, take one controller, one view, one model, and do it one by one. I will show you how to do that, but let's start with an easy one, helper library. So I clicked, so let me, Start it from the beginning, upgrade. I'm going to choose in place. Here on the next page, I choose to which framework I would like to upgrade. And the options that you can see here, it's long-term support version, the one that we support for a year and a half. Then it's the latest standard support version. Right now it's .NET 7. And the preview version. If you would like to test out the latest bits, it's already here available, .NET 8. This is a class library. So for class libraries, I have two more options. That's .NET Standard 2.0 and .NET Standard 2.1. Are you guys using .NET Standard? Raise your hand if you do. OK, so why would you choose .NET Standard? .NET Standard we created to have a code compatible between .NET Framework and .NET Core. Right now we have one .NET, .NET 5, 6, and 7, and there are no more .NET Framework, .NET Core family. It's one, so we don't really need .NET Standard anymore. But if you have older applications that are targeting .NET Framework and you want your class library to be used from both .NET Framework and .NET 6, 7, 8. In that case, use .NET Standard. And use .NET Standard 2.0, because that one is compatible with Framework and uh, Core family. .NET Standard 2.1 has APIs from .NET Core 3 that are not supported in .NET Framework. So my recommendation, Standard 2.0, if you have .NET Framework applications, or .NET 
six, seven, eight, if your applications are all gonna be upgraded. I'm gonna choose .NET 6. Here I have all the components. I can uncheck something, but Upgrade Assistant suggested to do it all, so that's what I'm gonna do. And let me remove that, all right. So Upgrade Assistant, now it's working, and it looks at all the files, and it upgrades everything that has to be upgraded. And you can see when there is a green field checkbox, that means that that file was upgraded. If there is a green uh, unfilled checkbox, one second, like this one, that means that this file was already compatible and it was left untouched. It just works with .NET 6. All right, great. So everything was upgraded just like that. Now if I go to options, or properties, here I can see that my application is targeting .NET 6 now. Okay, now let's have a more complicated task. Let's upgrade our website. Same way, I'm gonna right click and do upgrade. And here I see side-by-side -side incremental project upgrade only because that's ASP.NET application. ASP.NET application, you want to take it slow, you want to really make sure everything works. And what happens here, once I choose that, now I can choose to create a new project or if I already started migration, because in some cases people have those like multi-year upgrade projects and they already have projects that they want to add. In that case, you specify existing project. In my case, I don't have it, so I click new. I'll name it, let's say, Net7. I'm gonna choose .NET 7 and finish. So what's happening now? Uh, for upgrading your web application, we are using Strangler Fig pattern. That's, we're creating a facade and that is a new .NET 7 application. And we're putting it in front of your existing .NET framework application. But right now, this application is empty. It's just a template of .NET 7 app. If we look here, you can see it's basically a template. But in my original app, I have views here. I have like controller, models, views. I do not have any of that yet in my new application. So that's just a blank app. And when I run it, all calls are gonna go to .NET new application. And then it's gonna see, is there implementation for this route in my new app? If not, it's gonna forward it to my original .NET Framework application. So that way I can have my app in production running and I can slowly migrate uh, view by view, controller by controller. Once I have it in the new app, the new code will be executed. Until I have that implementation, the old code would be executed and that way your users can have smooth experience of using your app and just alternating between the new one and the old one. And once this is done, now I can really take time and move, piece, uh, move my pieces one by one. So here you can see I have, this is a simple demo app. I have only three endpoints and they all are on .NET framework. I have zero on .NET and I'm gonna move them to .NET or like implement them in new application as well. I'm gonna choose upgrade controller Choose my controller here. Leave everything checked. Select upgrade. And let upgrade assistant upgrade my controller. So I got lucky. I got everything working. And if I build and run, everything will be working. If you have some dependencies on applications that are or on libraries that are available only on .NET Framework, then you need to do some code refactoring. You need to find alternatives that are available on .NET, or you need to upgrade your new Git packages, etc. So there might be some manual work involved depending on the specifics of your project. But in my case, here you can see that now I got everything 
on .NET. And once I go, of course, like here in properties, this project is already targeting .NET 7. When I run it, it's just .NET 7 with everything implemented in that. All right, so that is Visual Studio Experience, and it allows you to upgrade console applications, class libraries, web applications, WinForms, WPF. It also allows you to port UWP apps to new WinUI 3. Uh, it allows you to upgrade Xamarin to .NET MAUI, and Mehdi is going to show you that. <laughs> you can also upgrade your Azure functions, and not only from framework to the .NET 6, 7, 8, but also you can upgrade Azure functions from earlier versions to the latest version before. And we are working currently on the CLI experience that will have the same logic behind it. We had the tool upgrade assistant before, but that was a completely different code base. And now we are upgrading it to have all the features and AI empowered <laughs> functionality that we have in Visual Studio. I'm going to show you it will be available very soon. So I have this third, my test project, right? I'm going to upgrade it in Visual Studio from the CLI. For that, uh, this is a global .NET tool, so to install it, you just write .NET tool install upgrade assistant, but give it about a week till we release a new version. And then you can just call upgrade assistant. Let me call help first to show you what is here. All right, so here the commands help version uh, commands upgrade. For upgrade, you can specify in place or side by side, two options if you want to upgrade the app or if you want to create a copy and upgrade the copy. You can specify target framework, you can name it like .NET 6, .NET 7, or you can just say long term support, short term, uh, standard term support, or preview. And you can specify the destination if you want to create a new project and put that new uh, uh, upgraded project into that destination. All right. Let's do upgrade. I'm already in the folder, the sporting app, a demo app, helper test. I'm gonna click upgrade. And all right, here, since I did not specify parameters, I can choose them, but I can also set it ahead of a time programmatically. Let's do .NET 7. And now it does some work. It shows me what is happening. So a bunch of projects, a bunch of files are getting upgraded successfully. All right, and it's done. 11 succeed, zero failed, one skipped. Let's go back to Visual Studio. It will prompt me to reload the project because we have messed with the project file. And here in test, right click. Oh, no, 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 not that one. Properties. Okay, Visual Studio really doesn't like when we upload project files outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close solution and open it again. And that is understandable. <laughs> she doesn't like when we're messing with its job. But if I go to project file here, uh, that project file, should be updated to 2007. Anyways, this is a preview, but check it out. We are gonna release it very soon <laughs> and it should work. <laughs> With that, thank you so much. If you have any questions, go ahead, catch me up after the session, or if you can reach me out on Twitter, Olya Gavrish together or Mastodon, or olia.gavrish at microsoft.com. If you have any issues with sporting or any questions, reach out, I'm happy to help you. Thank you so much, have a great day. Thank you.